Today we're downtown comparing the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. We're gonna compare the camera and the battery. Both phones are charged to 100%. We're gonna test every one of the cameras and we're going to see once and for all which one is actually the best phone. So this was actually a really fun day. It was freezing outside, but one of the things that really surprised me the most was the battery life on these phones. I spent the entire day doing this test, so you'll be able to see photo and video samples with plenty of light and low light, and then also at nighttime, which will show you what both of these phones are capable of. Let's start out by looking at the main camera. This is the one that most people are going to use most of the time, and you can see that both phones are able to take great pictures when there's plenty of light, but you'll also notice that there are some pretty significant differences. And first, it is important that we talk about how how these camera systems are being marketed to you because simply knowing that the S23 Ultra has a 200 megapixel sensor versus 48 megapixels on the 14 Pro Max, we're going to see differences in dynamic range and contrast and saturation, the way both phones render skin tones, different types of zoom and stabilization. And at the end of the day, I mostly want you to think about one thing. Which of the photos or video clips do you like better? All right, so back to the photos, we can see that the iPhone photo has much more contrast while the S23 Ultra photo is much more evenly lit. And you can see that it brought out more detail in the shadows. When it comes to saturation, notice that the sky in the iPhone photo is more blue while the yellow traffic lights in the S23 photo are more saturated. So as we look at the next couple of photos, you'll continue to see the same pattern when it comes to contrast, saturation, and the way that each phone handles details in the shadows and the highlights. I then tried to really push the computational photography on both phones by shooting into the sun. I was surprised to see how well both phones were able to handle the super challenging task of dealing with such a bright light while still being able to expose the rest of the photo. And this made me curious about how both phones will handle zooming in to capture subjects that are relatively far away. I typically think of Samsung as having better zoom capabilities but it really comes down to what type of zoom you're looking for. The iPhone has a 12 megapixel three time telephoto lens, but it's also able to crop into the center of the 48 megapixel main camera to create a 12 megapixel two time zoom. If you want to go ahead and push it to the limit, you can get up to 15 time digital zoom. Now, the S23 Ultra has two telephoto lenses, a three times and a 10 times. It can also be pushed all the way to a hundred time digital zoom. So what happens when we actually put these phones head to head? At two times zoom, the iPhone comes out ahead with a sharper and more detailed image, while the S23 Ultra image is brighter and more saturated. As zooming into three times, both phones did a pretty good job. And then when we go to 10 times, the iPhone has to digitally zoom while the S23 Ultra switches over to the 10 time lens and is clearly the better option. Now going outside, I wanted to push the digital zoom on both cameras. So what I did was start out with the main camera so you can get a sense of the distance. I then went ahead and switched to three times. I want you to keep your eye on the sign. Then I went ahead and switched to 15 times on both, which is the max on the iPhone and where the S23 Ultra still comes out ahead. And then of course at a hundred times zoom on the S23 Ultra where it's not really a great photo, but definitely usable considering that it came from a phone. Next, it was time to go inside because it was getting really cold. I wanted to get some food and this was a good opportunity to check out low light performance on the three times zoom. I think both phones did a very good job. But when we go to 10 times, again, it's a very easy win for the S23 Ultra. It was also interesting to check out the battery life where I expected the iPhone to have the edge, but to my surprise, the S23 Ultra was not only keeping up with the iPhone, but it was actually slightly ahead. And this is a real testament to the efficiency and optimization of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip because my S22 Ultra wasn't able to keep up with the 14 Pro Max. Now, after lunch, it was time to go back outside and before testing out some selfie video, I took a selfie photo with portrait mode on. Now, both phones did a good job blurring out the background. Now, you can see that the iPhone struggled a little with the edge detection in one spot, but the S23 Ultra has this 
really strange yellow cast to it, and the iPhone has much better skin tones and just better white balance all the way around. I then went inside for a quick selfie video and microphone test, followed by selfie portrait video on the S23 Ultra and selfie cinematic mode on the iPhone. Here's a quick indoor test of the microphone on both phones. So I want you to listen to a couple of things. Number one, how my voice sounds, and then number two, how much of the background noise it's actually picking up. Here's cinematic video with both phones just give you an idea of how much the background is being blurred and also the exposure on both phones. You can see this is in pretty challenging lighting conditions. So I'm in direct sunlight. It has to expose the bright side of my face and the dark side of my face. So this should give you a pretty good idea of how both phones handle cinematic mode. Quick note, my eyes tear when it's cold outside and that's why it looks like I'm crying. Now, if you go back and watch that clip again, you'll see that the S23 Ultra is more contrasty and it's much more true to real life. The iPhone evened out the lighting on my face and also added a good amount of skin smoothing. And here's cinematic mode and when I'm more in the shade. So this is an easier exposure for both phones because it doesn't have to deal with as much sunlight as we did in the previous shot. Now, another important aspect of video is stabilization, especially when you're walking around and the camera is moving. The good news is that even at a brisk walk, both phones are able to provide nice and stable video during the day and even at night, as you'll see more of later on. But what about when you're running? Well, there's a few things to consider here. And the first is which camera you're using. So all things being equal, a wider angle is always going to look more stable because relative to the movement, the objects are smaller and farther away. Now, if you wanna add more aggressive electronic stabilization, you can turn on what Apple calls action mode and Samsung calls super steady. Now, this is going to apply an additional crop regardless of which camera you choose because both phones use the additional pixels around the edge to reframe the image while compensating for camera movement. And I'm curious to know what you think. Which one had better stabilization in regular mode and which one was better with the additional electronic stabilization? Now, beyond the image quality, it's also important that we talk about what it's like to actually use the camera apps. Now, the iPhone has a relatively simple app. It offers different modes like cinematic video, slow motion, time lapse, panoramic, and portrait mode. And overall, the app is reliable, easy to use, and extremely responsive. But the S23 Ultra definitely has more features. We've got pro modes for both photography and video in case you want to manually control things like aperture, shutter speed, exposure compensation, focus mode, and white balance. There's expert raw if you want to capture raw images and then have more flexibility when it comes to editing. And we have director's view, which is super neat. All right, so this is director's view. So as I'm recording, and I want to go from what I'm showing you now, I then want to go ahead and click on another one of the cameras so I can zoom in, I can punch even farther in. I can also switch this around so now I'm here and you're seeing the other camera there. So that's a great feature if you're vlogging or even if you're at something like a birthday where typically the person that's holding the phone is not in the video. This feature allows you to capture the scene and your reaction at the same time. Another interesting feature is how each phone handles zooming in and out while recording video. The iPhone seems to transition a bit more smoothly, whereas the S23 Ultra has faster and more abrupt transition. And it would be super cool if there was a place in the settings where you could select your preferred transition speed. Next, I wanted to test out cinematic mode on the S23 Ultra or portrait video on the iPhone. And both phones can do this mode in 4K and in full HD. And it was interesting to see that when I tried to film these two super generous volunteers, the iPhone actually lost the subject a couple of times. I then switched things up and used myself as a subject, at which point both phones did a really good job considering that I was moving around. And the edge detection around my jacket was spot on and the one area that was challenging was my hat when I was looking off to the side. It was also super windy and you could see that I almost made an incredibly expensive mistake. Yeah, so I'm not gonna lie, that was super scary and once I took a deep breath, I also wanted to check 
check out slow motion with both phones. So the iPhone can shoot 1080p at 120 or 240 frames per second, while the S23 Ultra can do 1080p at 120, or if you want super slow-mo, you can record for about 17 seconds at 960 frames per second, which is pretty cool. Now, another area where it's great to have plenty of light is macro photography. And while it's not really something that I do a ton of with my phones, I tested both of them and the results were that the iPhone let me get closer and it created sharper and more detailed images. So at this point of the day, I'm absolutely freezing and I decided to go home for a couple hours until it got dark, which would let me warm up, check out the battery life and take a couple of photos of me. Now, once I could feel my hands again, I was shocked to see that the S23 Ultra had actually pulled even farther ahead of the 14 Pro Max and now had a pretty sizable lead in terms of battery life. On the other hand, I was not at all surprised to see that Mac is still super cute and yet was visibly upset at the fact that she wasn't allowed to come along on my adventure. It was interesting to see that the iPhone actually focused on her eye while the S23 Ultra focused on her nose, but I'd have to do more tests with her laying still to see if this is a pattern or just a one-off. Once it got dark, I passed packed my bag to take some low light shots indoors and then some night shots. The first thing I noticed is that the S23 Ultra night shots were brighter regardless of which camera I was using. The two main cameras were closer, but the S23 Ultra brought up more detail in the shadows and somewhat artificially brightened the sky to where it looked brighter in the photo than it did in real life. But when I zoomed in to 100%, the iPhone photos were slightly sharper and more detailed. I also took a quick shot of the moon, just handheld, and it's really no contest here. The S23 Ultra easily comes out ahead. Next, I went inside and took some low light photos to test out the detail levels. Now, both phones are sharp in the center, regardless of which camera you use. With the Ultra, wide, you can see that the S23 Ultra is sharper as you move closer to the edge. And the same is also true for the main camera, again, when we look closer to the edge. At two times zoom, I'm actually going to give the edge to the iPhone because as we mentioned, it's able to simply capture the center of the 48 megapixel sensor and generate a 12 megapixel image rather than starting out with a 12 megapixel photo and then having to zoom in. When we get to three times zoom, it's a bit of a mixed bag. There are a few areas where the iPhone is sharper, but overall the S23 Ultra again edges it out. Then of course, when we go to 10 times zoom, the S23 Ultra comes out ahead because it switches over to the 10 time lens, whereas the iPhone is digitally zooming in. I also tested out the front facing camera for regular video and for cinematic mode. For regular video, the S23 Ultra was more detailed, it had better skin tones, and the video had a lot less noise. When we moved to cinematic mode or portrait video, there wasn't as much noise in the iPhone video, and it also did a better job at edge detection around my hair. Overall, the iPhone footage smoothed my skin and then evened out the lighting more, whereas the S23 Ultra was sharper, more detailed, and more contrasty, so it really comes down to which look you like better. Now, moving on to the rear-facing cameras, Here's a sample of the main cameras. This is me walking around without stabilization turned on. This is a pretty tough situation for both phones because they have to deal with a darker sky and the bright lights, which brings me to artifacts. So if you've ever taken night video on your phone, you may have noticed that in certain situations, there are some really strange artifacts. In this example, they do exist in both phones, but they're much more pronounced in the iPhone footage. So as my day came to a close, I took a final look at the battery life on both phones. And again, the S23 Ultra was way ahead with 29% left versus 14% on the iPhone. Both phones were on for the entire time that I was shooting with the camera app running, and they were not charged at any time during the day. So before we come to a final verdict, we do have to consider the price. In the US, the official prices on the Apple and Samsung stores are $10.99 for the iPhone and $11.99 for the S23 Ultra. But you could typically find better prices by using the links in the description. I also know that in other countries, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a lot more expensive than the S23 Ultra. So let me know in the comments section where you're from and what these phones cost where you live. All right, so ultimately, which phone is better? Now, the iPhone has certain advantages when it comes to video. It has a more reliable and responsive camera app. It did a better job with macro photos, had 
more consistent white balance in portrait mode. And whether you prefer the more contrasty look of the images is a personal preference. And at the same time, Samsung really impressed me with this year's upgrades. You may look at this phone and think that it's just like the S22 Ultra, but with a high resolution sensor, 8K video, which you can now shoot at up to 30 frames per second, a more powerful and efficient chip with better battery life than the previous model, and with a host of powerful camera features like director's view and single take, the S23 Ultra is an incredible phone. Now you should check out this phone comparison. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.